Number five, the iPhone troll. The New Zealand professor Christoph Bartnek received an email inviting him to submit a paper on nuclear physics for a conference in the U.S. He was a bit puzzled. After all, he had almost no knowledge of the subject and had never been invited to speak in such a capacity before. Undaunted, he set out to write the requested paper in a novel fashion using iOS autocomplete. He simply began each sentence with atomic or nuclear and let his phone fill in the rest. The resulting paper titled, Atomic Energy Will Have Been Made Available to a Single Source, was accepted in less than three hours and the professor's presence at the conference was requested for an oral presentation, despite the paper being complete gibberish. Bartnek was forced to conclude that this was not a particularly good conference. As closing line of his paper somberly notes, power was not a great place for good time. Number four, the 10 percenter. When a 44-year-old Frenchman went to the doctor complaining of weakness in his left leg, a CAT scan was ordered, which was typical. What wasn't typical was the resulting image. Diagnosed during childhood with fluid buildup in the brain, the man had been treated with a shunt until age 14 when it was removed. Apparently, fluid had continued to fill the man's skull cavity for the next 30 years, slowly eroding his brain as it did so. Although the unidentified man is a functioning, healthy adult, only 10% of his brain remains. Scientists are at a loss to explain how a man missing many regions of his brain is able to function at all, let alone normally. It is hypothesized that the man's brain is in constant state of relearning, implying that the locations in the brain associated with specific functions may be far more flexible than previously thought. Number three, the walking brewery. Outside of Buffalo, New York in 2015, police arrested a female motorist on suspicion of driving while intoxicated, with good reason. Her speech was slurred, she smelled of alcohol, and she had been weaving all over the road. She was found to have a blood alcohol content over four times the legal limit. But when the case was brought before a judge, the charge of aggravated driving while intoxicated was promptly dismissed, after evidence was heard that the woman's body produces alcohol on its own. The condition known as auto brewery syndrome, or gut fermentation syndrome, is nowhere near as fun as it sounds. Those affected must closely monitor their diets, as breads and other carbohydrates are most likely to produce the undesired side effect, in which some patients skip the drunk part and go directly to terribly hungover. Amazingly, the woman had had a few earlier in the day, but not nearly enough to result in her titanic blood alcohol level, and had somehow not known she was afflicted with her condition until her lawyer's research brought its existence to light. Number two, the replicator. Finland's VTT Technical Research Center has prototyped a device which it believes could be the future of urban farming. Called the cell pod, it is an appliance resembling a lamp, small enough to fit on any kitchen shelf. All it needs are the undifferentiated cells of a plant in a microscopic amount, and within a week it will have 3D printed enough food for a healthy meal. Since the cells contain the genetic code for the entire plant and only the most desirable parts are replicated, the resulting substance is even healthier than a naturally grown plant. Researchers admit that the currently bland taste needs work, but the implications for food production in impoverished or high population areas are staggering. The device is even able to produce viable foodstuffs from the cells of some non-edible materials such as birch. Number one, evidence of life after death. The phenomenon of near death or out of body experiences has long been relegated to the realm of pseudoscience. But in the largest study of its kind, UK researchers have produced the first hint of evidence of consciousness in patients whose brains have stopped functioning by gathering hundreds of testimonials from patients who were able to accurately recall their surroundings and events that took place while they were in a state of brain death. In one of the most compelling cases, a 57-year-old man recalled leaving his body and watching efforts to resuscitate him, describing the specific events exactly as they happened. Critically, he remembered hearing two beeps from a machine that beeps at three-minute intervals, which lined up exactly with the amount of time during which he registered no brain activity. Obviously, further research of the implications is required, but given that a total lack of brain activity is medically synonymous with death, this study constitutes the strongest evidence yet that consciousness continues in some form or another even after we die. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know by clicking on the like button and do share, write a comment, and don't forget to subscribe so that you can catch up with my next video.